Good afternoon to, uh, to all of you. Hope you all got a chance to see the simulator and have some lunch. On the panel, I have here uh, with me Mark and Rahul. I would request to please direct your questions for the today's event, the center, and our plans for the future. Thank you. plans for expansion, if any, at this point of time. And uh, the other question is, do you foresee any impact of, of, on operations by Indigo uh, on the view, in, in view of the Tata Air Asia Alliance and uh, Tata Singapore Airlines uh, Alliance coming up? And, and the third one is, what is unique about this training center? compared to the other facilities already exist in India? So, your first question, expansion plans, are you talking specific to? Air fleet, uh, aircraft fleet, and, and, and like infrastructural, yeah. yeah. <coughs> so, from our point of view, I think, you know, we have, uh, we have a work cut out for ourselves when it comes to Indigo. And I think, sort of, in the near term, the focus would remain on continuing to build that airline, continuing to build the franchise. And the so, in terms of sort of immediate plans for growth, I think we just want to focus on, on building out that. Uh, I would prefer not to talk about Tata SIA because you know I don't run the airline, but but at a generic level, we very much welcome competition. And, and I think you heard heard me say in the morning. India is an enormously under underserved market, and I think it certainly deserves uh, many players to come in, and, and I think there's room for everybody to to, to survive and, and prosper. So we very much welcome uh, them to be part of this journey of, of growing aviation. How is the center different than others? You know, maybe I I ask Mark to sort of respond to that. Well, I, I can say in terms of different from the others, certainly it's a uh, uh, pinnacle of, uh, of in, uh, in terms of the how modern it is. Uh, the the uh, simulators that are here are are the most advanced simulators that we have, the 5000 series for the Airbus 320. Uh, and the architecture is, uh, is really, um, uh, again, the latest generation uh, that, that, takes into, that takes into account all lessons we have around the world. So I think it's, it's no exaggeration to say it's probably the most modern in the 42 training centers that we have around the world. Is there any bias towards Air Airbus-centric uh, uh, training? Like you speak about Airbus more. And... Well, I think Airbus certainly is uh, is using uh, this training center to do uh, entitlement training for its customers. So we're very happy and proud to be selected as an Airbus authorized training center. That's, that's very important. It's also very, I think, a key uh, for Airbus in terms of being able to offer a local training for its customers in India. Uh, so, no, but it's not Airbus centric. We will have undoubtedly uh, simulators of uh, other uh, types of aircraft that uh, represents uh, the diversity of aircraft flying uh, here in India. Uh, one quick question. Uh, India is still at nascent state in terms of key infrastructures, including the pool of pilots, particularly quality pilots. What solutions do you plan to provide the operators and owners in India with? Well, I, I suppose part of the effort of setting up a center like this, and with the potential scale of it growing to six, possibly eight sims at the at at moment in time, is it effective of the fact that, 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 that a center like this uh, wants to embrace the sort of the opportunity of what we see is going to happen in the long term. There's going to be strong demand for pilots. We want to have have, have cadet training, which I think CAE already does, uh, and then sort of bring them into centers like this, sort of throw up high quality individuals uh, who can fly fly around the country safely. Uh, I think we also sort of talked a little bit about the fact that you know we are currently exploring. 
the opportunity of setting up a training facility for aircraft maintenance engineers and other sort of pivotal uh, function of, within operating an airline. So we are doing what we can. Thank you. Uh, you know, you were quoted a couple of years ago saying that the Ego Airlines, you don't compete with other airlines, you compete with buses or with railway. But we're seeing that the, the, that the, the fair gap between low cost carriers like Indigo and other full service carriers also shrinking. Do you still hold that view? And, and, and do you feel that the high airfares that we're seeing, that is here to stay for the time being? Uh, so let me give you a different, uh, again, let me give an example of a conversation I had with, with someone a couple of days ago. This was someone I know who's going to coach him. And he was complaining about the fare being too high. And, and he said to me, Raul, you know, the fare to coaching is 10,000 rupees. And I then sort of walked into the math of saying, you're going to be on a three hour flight. It's uh, $160, give or take one way. And that by no means is, is an expensive fare. Uh, we must also understand that input costs have gone up, uh, fuel has gone to where it is, the rupee is down to where it is, and given the fact that the, the airline business is is highly dependent on, on, uh, on hard currency costs, it, it will have its impact. In terms of fare gap shrink between the, the low fare carriers and the full service carriers, uh, maybe the full service carriers are, are, are trying to bridge that gap. Uh, certainly, the low fare carriers are not. So it's a question you should maybe uh, propose to. But it happens both ways, right, Mr. Bhatia? We've seen your fares go up. They might be slashing fares also to compete. But it's you know you know but it's a two way process. It's not. I mean, it's not that your fares have, have been stagnant either. They may be slashing, but you've also been increasing. Means the gap is coming down. So we think that the religion at Indigo is to keep fares low. There is no question about it. I, I don't believe that Indigo can uh, can continue to to maintain a growth profile of 20 or 30 percent a year if it continues to to maintain high fares. So I think the religion of the company is to keep fares low, get in the customers, fill up the planes, and get more planes. Uh, I, so you know you may be seeing seeing seeing. Uh, seeing an anomaly right now because of, of just the way the cost structure is set up vis-a-vis -vis fuel and, 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 uh, and, and the rupee to the dollar. But, you know, over a, a long period of time, I think, like I said, Indigo's life is around keeping fares low. Just, just one last question on the FAS, but because of rising competition, do you foresee Indigo also being forced into what, you know, what you're implying the other full service carriers are, are being forced to do, that is to lower fares? Now with, well, now with also uh, other uh, low fare, uh, low cost carriers like Air Asia coming in, do you think that you would, that would be a sort of a, uh, as to beat competition, you would have to do that as well? We are not shy of competition. We will we'll take the competition head on. And you do not foresee your, uh, dropping your fares because of competition? No, the fares are the fares. I mean, we, we compete with what's out there in the marketplace. They've been promising us, uh, you know, a, a free air ticket also, Air Asia. That's been their business. You know, there's a good old saying in life: future is very bright, and and, and good luck to the competition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the lady in the second. Neela Matthews from AIM. Uh, quick questions. Uh, outsourcing was your mantra, being a budget carrier. Now, why this? Because the say the service tax in India is about 12 percent. Is how economical is this going to be? for you in the long run, then by when do you expect to reach full capacity? And a small question regarding the military. You said that at some point you might be looking at mill simulators. So uh, will this help regarding the offset commitments? Are you foreseeing that for the future? So the military side, maybe I'll leave, leave Mark to, to respond to. Uh, why are we doing this ourselves and not outsourcing? I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that that India, we think, offers an enormous opportunity for pilot training into the future, and we want to participate in that opportunity. Uh, when will it be uh, full capacity? Uh, this current facility, I think, uh, can take six sims. Our current plans are that we'll have this place populated with, with the six simulators by 2017. We do have 
additional real estate I'm told where we can probably put two more bays at this moment in time, but we'll just take things as they come. Maybe I'll leave it to you, Mark. Uh, well, well, with regards to military sims, I certainly agree with the comments by Raul that uh, we will certainly be uh, trying to uh, fill the capacity or grow the capacity with uh, adding military simulators. And yes, I think you're correct. I mean, the uh, military OEMs, uh, core OEMs, have offset obligations as they deliver uh, airplanes and helicopters uh, in light of, I think, the unprecedented uh, uh, modernization of the Indian military. So uh, we've equipped ourselves with um, the ability to do offsets uh, <coughs> with uh, partner companies, uh, that, and we'd love to be able to do that here uh, in the center of our partner here. Have you spoken to the military about uh, your uh, um, flights and plans and the, the kind of uh, trainings you offer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we speak to uh, all branches of the U.S. Uh, the Indian military. Sorry, we have uh, well, we have 300. See, ourselves have 300 uh, employees in country. Um, our leader uh, here, he was, he, was at, he was at the ceremonies this morning. Uh, he goes after uh, you know business on the civil and the military side. So we are in. Uh, we're discussing with them all the time. What all sims are you planning to bring in the military from the military? Well, I can't really say right now. It'll depend on what kind of, we'll, we'll put the SIMS for whichever contracts we can secure with those manufacturers. As, as a CAE president, uh, how would you compare the talents of uh, military pilots versus commercial pilots? Who is more uh, capable to handle the aircraft or the flight? More capital Military pilots versus yeah. cap commercial pilots. More capable. More capable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, look, I think that uh, probably the the, the question the, the question really is for their missions they're just as capable of one another, uh, one or other I mean the the mission is very different uh, obviously uh, but uh, I think by the time a pilot uh, is ready to fly either a military fighter bomber refueling aircraft or helicopter he or she is trained to do the mission very effectively and safely and and the same goes. And uh, no, we should, nobody should ever be concerned. And uh, here in India, uh, I can tell you that the DGCA and the airlines hold uh, safety to a world-class standard. And uh, I would uh, I would never be worried about the safety at all of uh, any pilot that uh, in any aircraft that you would fly. Uh, uh, I just wanted to ask you, this is a new business venture for the group itself. So what kind of, the, what is the, kind of partnership you have on this JV agreement with this sales sale on that. And also uh, in the next two years you are having some new aircrafts coming in adding to your capacity. So a little bit of word uh, from your experience uh, you know what kind of traffic you expect to see. So the joint venture is a 50-50 joint venture between Interglobe and CAE. Uh, does that answer your first question? Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but you know I should have these numbers and think these things on my fingertips. But I'm not exactly sure of how many how many planes we are going to bring in over the next two years. I, I if my memory serves me correctly, I think we would be operating 85 aircraft by the end of 2014. Uh, I'm not entirely certain what that number will be in 2015. But obviously there'll be some addition. Uh, will be additional aircraft that will come in. Uh, we, we remain very optimistic about, about India as a market. Uh, again, something we talked about earlier today. Uh, there's no reason why this country shouldn't deserve many, many more planes than it currently sort of has flying commercially. Uh, we were talking over lunch today with the DGCA and, and the interesting he said there's a statistic called uh, some statistic of of number of trips, per capita trips. And I did not know this, what he said is the worst of the world. Worst of the world. Yeah, so it just tells you that, that there's only opportunity out there. But clearly for us, you know, we, we can't need to believe that, that operators with the finest cost structure will, will find it prevail. Will this uh, JV also contribute towards general aviation in addition to the large airliner operators? General aviation, smaller aircraft, corporate jets, uh, business aviation. Well, at, 
I mean, we, uh, we haven't really discussed it here, but I mean, clearly, uh, this type of training center, we can offer business to train. There's no doubt that we can provide business to training here. And, and if there was a case to put a business in here, we would, I think we would do it. And our, our board, uh, the JV would look at it, and I think it would find an attractive business case. Will the new civil be uh, famous AT20 capable, or will that, you'll have more different kind of like Boeing uh, simulator? Well, I think as we said uh, a while ago, I mean, Indigo Airlines uh, clearly will be adding more 320s, uh, <clears throat> but I think we will, I, I can definitely foresee a uh, future, not, not too distant, where we'll be looking to add uh, simulators for other types of aircraft, including Boeing, because I mean, that's the kind of air aircraft that are being flown uh, here in India. Boeing and in, Boeing and in Airbus and other manufacturers. Uh, Mark, uh, you already have a significant uh, military business presence in India. I think you have already sold some sims to the uh, uh, Indian Air Force uh, for their training facilities. So how are those doing and what kind of revenue model you have? I mean, you already have, I mean, are those direct sales or those are leased out? Or how does this work? So, well, I think the, the business we have with the military uh, here in India so far, we've sold uh, we've sold through uh, here in India equipment, our company here in India, we've sold equipment uh, for uh, various types of uh, simulators. Uh, most of the time, it's not, as, not as large as the ones you would see here. Uh, I think the exception, we have level D simulators developed for the Drew helicopter, which is a new indigenous helicopter built uh, by HAL. And in that case, the model is, in fact, we have a 50-50 joint venture with HAL. It, the center is called Hatsoft, located in Bangalore. So they developed the sim simulator? We developed the simulator, and uh, we have a partnership with them uh, for that simulator. They will provide intellectual property, uh, parts, for example, for the helicopter. We, we will manufacture, design manufacture the simulator, put it in the train center, and we jointly operate it, just like we do here with Integral. So uh, that is expected by the... Like uh, actually, the cylinder is already in place. They already... In Hassan. How do you compare the training infrastructure in India versus China? I, I would... The, way, the good thing about aviation, I would say, is uh, <coughs> that for, for reasons of safety and international... And, and the benefits of international standardization and harmonization, you will find, actually, I would tell you, very little difference. Uh, and, and you would expect that. You would want that as a flying public because, uh, like, I got on an airplane yesterday in New York, and I was here in Delhi in 14 hours, the same airline, obviously. So you would not want to have major differences between training infrastructure anywhere around the world. And uh, I think just like India, I think as China grows its international uh, aviation well, it's aviation business, which, just like India, is growing by leaps and bounds. They have they have a very very real sensitivity to making sure that airline operations are safe, and they do not want to have to do anything that could possibly uh, cause a black mark uh, on on the industry and the growth of aviation. And you could say obviously the same for India. So. I would, you would find, uh, if you would go into it, you would find very similar kind of infrastructure. But as I said a while ago, uh, this is the most modern there is in this very facility that you visited here today. The very quality of pilot training is a critical issue today. How do you uh, uh, perceive it and how do you plan to address that, the very quality of the pilot? Well, we see, we see our role uh, at CE working, and, and we're very proud of this uh, fact, that we work with regulatory, regulatory bottles, uh, bodies around the world to make sure that uh, standards of training uh, are, uh, first of all, you know, standardized around the world uh, to uh, a level of safety which is continuously increasing that takes into account lessons learned of operations around the world. So we see our view as just elevating the safety standard uh, at all times. And we work with regulatory bodies around the world, the GGAC here in India, for, for, for sure to be able to accomplish that mission. 
one of the more interesting developments in, in aviation at the moment is the number of new uh, manufacturers who are coming in from China, from even the C100 from uh, Canada. Uh, just wanted to understand one uh, for you is uh, is how are you adopting and, and changing your business to accommodate, say, a Comac or a, or a Bombardier C100? And for you, uh, is there a market in India for these, these aircraft, these new manufacturers who are coming in? I think the first one, uh, we, I mean, we don't have to uh, adapt our model. We're very happy that that dynamic has happened because at CAE, uh, I mean, all we do uh, is simulation and training. So we better be good at it. So we work very hard to do that, including, for example, spending 10% of our revenues every year in research and development to ensure that we have uh, the best training tools in, in the industry. In the industry, and, and I, that's also the best as what as regards to cost effectiveness as well, because uh, airlines are tough business anywhere in the world. Uh, for, so going back to the specific airplanes, we're very <coughs> proud of the fact that all the new airplanes that have been launched in the last five years, the CA has been selected to do the simulators for every one of them. So the C series that we talked about, the Colmac 919, the ERJ 21, the Airbus 350, uh, the HBR 600, we, we have been selected to do all of the simulators for those aircraft by the manufacturers. And the reason is, is because these days uh, you, you need a simulator not only to train the pilots of the new aircraft, you actually need it to be able to certify the aircraft. So you have to be sure if you select them, the, uh, the partner in, for your simulator, you better be sure that they will be able to, you know, to do it. And it's not evident uh, to be able to do a simulator for an airplane that, that exists only in the, in the engineer's mind. <laughs> so you have to work, and, and that's, that's our business, that's what we do. So we see this very positive, in short. What has been your vision in this partnership, behind this partnership? Uh, to put it quite simply, you know, just work with the best of the business. May we have the last question now? There was a second part of the question. Uh, Sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, about uh, the 100 to 150 seater aircraft. Uh, is there a market uh, for these, these uh, new manufacturers who, are, who might be uh, talking to a lot of airlines in India? Is, is, there, a, is there an opportunity there, or is India a more higher uh, capacity market? No, no, clearly there's a market for, for, for smaller aircraft. Uh, whether Indigo chooses to participate in it or not is a, is a different, sure. different, uh, different animal, but, but clearly, you know, there's a lot of regional connectivity that you can establish with smaller aircraft, and, and I'm sure someday somebody will back that up. Thank you. Uh, just to be fair to both, uh, what makes Calcutta such a flavor of the season? Seven days to Calcutta, and uh, one tiny question, sir, and that is uh, regarding any where, where, which is going to be your next facility in Asia? Our next facility, our next facility in Asia. Uh, I usually don't give forward-looking statements like that. It's, you know, you're just alert to competition. <laughs> but we are establishing, we are opening up new centers, uh, uh, you know, on a continual basis. We just opened one recently in the Philippines. Uh, we're just we're opening one in, uh, in Korea right now. Um, beyond that, I wouldn't say. Any more plans for India? Yeah. Well, uh, we, we think Indigo is the flavor of Calcutta, uh, Neelam. Uh, we, we, for a very long time now, uh, are the, the, the biggest operators in, 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 in the east part of the country. And, and we get uh, an enormous amount of response for, from that part of the country. And we will continue to build Calcutta. Is, is there a plan on the horizon, maybe taking Indigo for the short-term, long-term plan? Uh, is it going to happen tomorrow? No, I don't think so. You know, over time, maybe at, at some point in time, are we sort of, is it imminent? We don't think so. Will there be more Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I think we will call close to this event now. Thank you, Mark.